I told you that we were going to uh, talk about hot cross buns today. Or as a matter of fact, we're going to make some hot cross buns. But I want to explain the song, Hot Cross Buns. It talks about pennies. And that's these great big, it's a, an English song. It's these great big English pennies. They're huge. And can you imagine going to the store with those now? These are, these are very old uh, English pennies, probably as old as the song. And can you imagine just taking those into the grocery store? So if you got one hot cross bun for a penny, or maybe two hot cross buns for a penny, that's what the song is telling you. So to make our hot cross buns, what we need are all the ingredients that we have in front of here, in front of us here. First thing we need is some warm milk, and we take some yeast. The yeast makes it rise, and it's called leavening. In the Bible, it sometimes talks about unleavened bread, and that means it hasn't got any yeast or other things that cause the, the bread to rise. And this is, uh, we mix this up, and we set this aside for a minute or two, and we take, the next thing we do is we take um, two large eggs, and we throw them in the bowl. And we take three cups of flour, and we throw it in the bowl. And we take a teaspoon of cinnamon. And a quarter teaspoon of allspice. And we take a quarter cup of sugar. It goes in the bowl too. And um, some salt. Let's see what else do we have left. And we have to throw some butter in there. So all of those things go in, as some in front of me, um, into our hot cross buns. And then we're going to mix them up. So I'll be back after we got them mixed. Now that we have those things mixed in, we're going to take our yeast mixture, which is starting to bubble up a bit. And we're going to take the milk and the yeast, and we're going to add them to that mixture. We're going to make sure we get all of it. And we're going to mix that in. And one of the things that hot crust buns always have is either raisins or currants or some people even use um, even use uh, uh, candied uh, candy fruit like you would in Christmas cake. So there's our mixture. And I'm going to add our raisins or uh, currants, sorry, currants. We're going to mix them in. That makes a nice mixture. See that? Now what it asks us to do now is add more flour. And we add um, a little bit at a time, stirring it in. Until we get sort of a dough. Well, it is a dough. And this takes a while. So, so I'll come back. So now it's all mixed into a ball like that. And in the next stage is we take some flour and we sift the flour on the counter and we turn this out into the onto the floured countertop and we knead it. Kneading means you move it with your hands like this. We do that for about about a minute and a half or so. And this just makes sure that everything is nicely mixed together. And we can add a little flour every so often if it gets sticky. Hot cross buns have always been a special treat at Easter time. And uh, part of the reason for that is the fact that there's a cross on the top. And at Easter we know that Jesus died on the cross. And I guess, as I think about it, the yeast in there is sort of like because it causes the bread to rise. It's sort of like what Jesus did on Easter Sunday. He rose. And um, they've always been a special treat at, at Easter time. And so now that I've got it all packed together into a nice firm ball, we're going to put it back in the bowl. And we have to leave it sit 
for an hour while the yeast works. So take a look at the size now, compare it to my hand, and in a while we'll see exactly how uh, it looks when it's risen. Hi, so now we've let this sit for an hour, and look how nice and big it's got. That's because the yeast has been working on it. But we have to do something, it doesn't seem right, but we have to do something that they call punching it down, which means i got to punch it down doing this, just to flatten it out again, to get the bubbles out of it, because they'll come back. Get the bubbles out of it, and then I'm going to turn it over onto my counter. Again, I should have floured it first. turn it out on there and I'm going to knead it a little bit more and I'm going to start breaking it up in little balls and I can get 24 balls out of this so a ball of dough about like that size and I'm going to put it on the pan can you see the pan I'll put it on the pan with the parchment paper so we get 24 of those this reminds me of, a, of an Easter joke. It always worries Reverend Joyce when I say I'm going to tell one of my jokes. Um, what do you get when you pour boiling water down a rabbit hole? You get a hot cross bunny. All right. And we have to let those sit again for a little while so the yeast can work some more. And so I'll see you back in 45 minutes. Now the buns have risen. And they're pretty big. I might have made them too big, but that's okay. Nothing like a good big hot cross bun. What we do now is we take our knife and we cut a sharp knife. We take and we cut the cross in the top of each one so that it's Just like that. And then we take some egg yolk and we just brush it on the top. Egg yolk and a little bit of water. And what this will do is give it that nice golden brown, almost like a pretzel look on top. There we go. Now what we'll do is we'll take them and we'll put them in the oven and cook them for a little while. And then I'll show you how to put the crosses on. Okay, so here they are. They've come out of the oven, and I'm going to put the crosses on now. And this is called a piping bag. Not to be confused with a bagpipe, because that would be noisy. But the piping bag allows me to squirt the icing, which is just simply made with milk and icing sugar. And I get to squirt the cross on there. You just follow the lines that you cut with the knife. And there you have it, hot cross bun. And now that I've got my hot cross buns, it's time for a song. And I like this song because it reminds me um, of all the things that Jesus wanted us to do. How he wanted us to love each other and uh, to be good to each other and to show our love. And when I eat hot, cr hot cross buns now, I think of why he gave himself to us for that very purpose, so that we would live a better life and live a life um, full of love for each other. The song is from Ghana, and if you, uh, uh, if you sing it, it, you're going to see that we don't say Jesus, we say Yezu, and it, the chorus goes like this, Yezu, Yezu, fill us with your love. Show us how to serve the neighbors we have from you. And I'm going to sing a line of the chorus, and I want you to sing it back to me so that we can sing it every time we come to it. Yezu, Yezu, fill us with your love. Now sing that back to me. Show us how to serve. Sing that to me. Show us how to serve. Listen. The 
neighbors we have from you. Sing that with me. The neighbors we have from you. Let's sing the chorus all together. Jesus, Jesus, fill us with your love. Show us how to serve the neighbors we have from you. Kneels at the feet of his friends, silently washes their feet. The master who acts as a slave to them. Sing the chorus with me. Yezu, Yezu, fill us with your love, show us how to serve the neighbors we have from you. Neighbors are rich and poor, varied in color and race. Neighbors are near and far away. Sing the chorus with me. Yezu, Yezu, us with your love, show us how to serve the neighbors we have from you. These are the ones we should serve. These are the ones we should love. All our neighbors to us and you. Yesu, Yesu. Us with your love, show us how to serve the neighbors we have from you. One more time. Yezu, Yezu, fill us with your love, show us how to serve the neighbors we have from you. That's a good reminder during Lent that we are to help each other and to serve each other. And uh, remember that every time you eat one of those hot cross buns, that that's why Jesus came and what he did for us was to make it a good life when we share with each other. I'll see you next time. Thank you very much for coming and joining me in for hot cross buns. Bye-bye.